Hello everybody, it's Jamie from Old Shipping Lines and welcome back to a new video. Now, before World War II, the Netherlands had some amazing ships. For example, the SS New Amsterdam and the MS Dempo and so many others. But sadly, during World War II, some of these ships would be lost. Now, in the video of today, we'll be covering some of these wrecks, so enjoy! Bringing old ships to life Now, as our first ship, we have the SS Statendam. She was owned by the famous Holland America Line. And she would be built by the famous shipbuilders, the Holland and Wolf in Belfast. Now, the gross tonnage of this vessel would be 29,511 gross registered tons, with a length of 697 feet and with a beam of 81 feet. The vessel could go a speed of 19 knots and she would be launched on 11 September 1924 with her maiden voyage being on 11 April 1929 from the Dutch city of Rotterdam to New York. Now, during World War II, on 11 May 1940, with the German invasion of the Netherlands, the Statendam caught fire and was a total loss. The origins of the fire remain a topic of debate with some suggesting that the Dutch initially ignited the vessel to prevent it from falling into enemy hands, while others claim that she was struck by German bombs. Regardless of the cause, the ship was deemed irrecoverably damaged and sold for scrap in August of that same year. Now for our second ship we have the SS van Rensselaer. This vessel was owned by the Koninklijke Nederlandse Stoomboot Maatschappij and she would be built by the shipbuilders Nederlandse Scheepsbouw Mei. The gross tonnage of this vessel would be 4191 gross registered tons, with her length being 108.97 meters. The vessel could go a speed of 11 and a half knots, and she would be launched in 1920. Now, during World War II, she would leave Amsterdam to escape from the Germans. However, just outside the outer harbor of Eymuiden, on May the 13th, 1940, the ship struck a German magnetic mine. She was still able to be initially grounded in a sinking state on the north side of the Southern Pier. The Verinseler was then bombarded by German planes on the same day and the following day, and she became a total wreck. Our third ship is the SS Slamat. This lovely vessel was owned by the Rotterdamse Lloyd and 
she would be built by the shipbuilders Koninklijke Maatschappij de Schelde. The gross tonnage of this vessel would be 11.406 gross registered tons, with her length being 482.5 feet and with a beam of 62.0 feet. She could go a speed of 15 knots. The vessel would be launched on October the 27th, 1923. And she would be delivered to the Rotterdam Lloyd on April the 12th, 1924. Now, during World War II, in 1941, as a troop transport ship traveling from Alexandria to Crete in the Mediterranean Sea, she was bombed by German planes while in convoy near Napulia, and she sank. Now our next ship will be the SS Simon Bolivar. This fine liner was owned by the Koninklijke Nederlandse Stoomboot Maatschappij. And she was built by the shipbuilders de Rotterdamse Droogdok Maatschappij. Now the gross tonnage of this vessel would be 7906 gross registered tons with a length of 133.65 meters and she would have had a beam of 18.03 meters. She could go a speed of 18 knots and she would be launched on December the 15th, 1926. And she would be delivered on March the 5th, 1927. However, during World War II, on November the 18th, 1939, the SS Simon Bolivar was traveling from Holland to Paramaribo when she hit a mine near Harwich. The ship was carrying 400 passengers and crew members and the explosion caused significant damage. Many people on the deck were killed, including her captain, who was mortally wounded and later passed away. The impact of the explosion resulted in the masts of the Simon Bolivar being blown down and the ship beginning to sink by the stern. The ship's radio equipment was also damaged and the crew were unable to send out a distress signal. Fortunately, other vessels in the area quickly responded to the scene. Approximately 15 minutes after the initial explosion, there was a second explosion that caused further damage to some of the remaining lifeboats. According to the ship's officers, the Simon Bolivar had struck two mines, one on each side of the ship. Despite the efforts of the crew and the rescue vessels, the Simon Bolivar eventually sank, resulting in the loss of 84 lives. Now our next ship will be the SS Roseboom. 
this fine liner was owned by the Koninklijke Pakketvaartmaatschappij. And she would be built by the shipbuilders Rijke and Co. of Rotterdam. Now, the gross tonnage of this vessel would be 1.035 gross registered tons with a length of 70.1 meters and she had a beam of 11.6 meters she could go a speed of 10 knots and she would be launched in 1926. Now during World War II at 11.35 pm on March the 1st 1942 the Roseboom was sailing in the Indian Ocean situated to the west of Samutra when she came into view of I-59, a submarine of the Imperial Japanese Navy. Lieutenant Commander Yoshimatsu Tamori was in command of the submarine, which proceeded to launch a torpedo at the Roseboom, causing her to capsize and sink rapidly. Our next ship will be VSS Jan Pietersoon Koen. This lovely vessel was owned by the Stoomvaartmaatschappij Nederland. And she was built by the shipbuilders the Nederlandse Scheepsbouw Mei. Now the gross tonnage of this vessel would be 11.140 gross registered tons with her length being 159.26 meters and with a beam of 18.4 meters she could go a speed of 15 knots and she would be launched on 30 September 1914. In June 1915, the construction of the Jan Pietersoon Koen was finished, making her the newest flagship of the Stoomvaartmaatschappij Nederland. At the time, she was also the biggest vessel ever built in the Netherlands. On 11 September 1915 at 3 p.m. the Jan Pietersoon Koen embarked on her maiden voyage to Batavia from Amsterdam. To reach her destination the ship sailed through the Mediterranean Sea and the Suez Canal. Now, during World War II, the Royal Netherlands Navy had a plan to scuttle the ship at the entrance of the port of Uymuide to prevent German warships from entering the harbor. The ship sailed from Amsterdam to Uymuide on the night of May the 14th, 1940. Two tugboats were supposed to escort the ship to the harbor entrance, but they were sunk too early. The Royal Netherlands Navy then ordered the tugboat Atje and a minesweeper to tow the ship into position. The ship was positioned with her bow to the southern pier and her stern to the northern pier of the port entrance. 
the explosives that were previously installed on the ship were detonated and the ship sank between the piers successfully, prohibiting German ships from entering the harbor. However, the Netherlands surrendered to the Axis powers and they were occupied by Nazi Germany. During the war, the Jan Pieterson Koen sank deeper into the sea and her upper decks were severely damaged and deteriorated by the strong waves. Her funnels and some decks also collapsed during this period. After the war, in May and June 1945, with help from the Royal Navy, the Royal Netherlands Navy destroyed what was left of the ship using depth charges. Now our next ship will be the MS Balloran. This lovely vessel was owned by the Rotterdam's Lloyd and she would be built by the shipbuilders, the NV Koninklijke Maatschappij De Schelde. The gross tonnage of this vessel would be 1698-1 gross registered tons, with her length being 175.07 meters and she had a beam of 21.45 meters. The vessel could go a speed of 18 knots. She would be launched on 26 July 1930 and she would be delivered on 9 April 1930. The maiden voyage of this vessel would be on April the 16th 1930 from Rotterdam to Batavia. Now in May 1940 during World War II the German army invaded the Netherlands and captured the ship. She would later be renamed to the MS Strasbourg. The ship was then used as a hospital ship by the German Navy. Unfortunately, she collided with a mine of Uymuide on September the 1st, 1943 while sailing from Rotterdam to Hamburg and she was grounded on the beach. Unfortunately, three weeks later, the ship was set on fire by British bombers and torpedo boats. She became a total loss. Now, According to some sources, the ship, despite her hospital status, was equipped with anti-aircraft guns. Now our next ship will be the SS Bantam. This lovely vessel was owned by the Koninklijke Pakketvaartmaatschappij. And she would be built by the shipbuilders, the NV Machinefabriek and Scheepswerf van P. Smit Jr. of the city of Rotterdam. Now the gross tonnage of this vessel would be 3.322 gross registered tons, with her length being 323 feet and she had a beam of 48.2 
feet. She would be launched in 1930. Now, during World War II, the Batam was operating as part of Operation Lilliput. However, on 28 March 1943, nine Imperial Japanese well dive bombers attacked Oro Bay, New Guinea, while the SS Bantam was alongside a Liberty Wharf unloading. A total of seven bombs fell on or near the SS Bantam. The forward of the bridge, the number three hold and engine room were damaged, while two bombs that hit the Liberty Wharf tore a hole in the ship's side on the waterline, and she began taking on water rapidly. The ship caught fire, and the Liberty Wharf was burning uncontrollably, causing the two pontoons to sink. The Bantam was sinking, and it was decided to beach her and a couple of large motorboats assisted in pulling the ship away from the wharf. The HMAS Bowen went alongside and began to fight the fires. The SS Bantam was beached at the head of Oro Bay. The wreck was raised and towed to Sydney, where she was scuttled 36 miles off Sydney on 24 September 1946, after being filled with unwanted chemical warfare agents. Now our next ship will be the SS New Zealand. This ship was owned by the Koninklijke Pakketvaart Mei, and she was built by the shipbuilders the Rotterdamse DD Mei. Now the gross tonnage of this vessel would be 10.906 gross registered tons, with her length being 527 feet and she had a beam of 62.30 feet. The vessel could go a speed of 15 and a half knots and she would be launched on 6 January 1928 and she would be completed on 12 April 1928. Now, during World War II, the Admiralty took over the ship and used her as a means to transport troops. On 11 November 1942, specifically at 12.42 hours, the New Zealand with her captain, Captain Klaas Ulbe Noordenbos at the helm, was struck by a torpedo launched by U-380. The attack happened approximately 80 miles away from Gibraltar. The ship was returning from Operation Torch, the Allied invasion of North Africa. On board she had 214 crew members, 29 gunners and 13 service passengers. Tragically, the ship sank at 13.08 hours, resulting in the loss of 
14 men. Our next ship will be the MS Dempo. This lovely vessel was owned by the Rotterdam Lloyd and she was built by the shipbuilders the Schelde Shipyards at Vlissingen in the Netherlands. Now the gross tonnage of this vessel would be 16.979 gross registered tons with a length of 175.07 feet. On July the 26, 1930, her official naming and launching were performed. On February the 21st, 1931, she was made ready for her maiden voyage to Batavia in March. Now, during World War II in 1944, the MS Dempo sailed as a troop transport ship for the British Ministry of War Transport under Captain Willem Janssen, who had been commanding the Dempo since 1942. The ship was in a convoy from Naples to North Africa. On March the 17th, 1944, at 9.50 am, the ship was torpedoed by a German U-boat, U-371, in the Mediterranean Sea. There were no troops left on board the ship. The 3.400 men had just been landed in Naples. The entire crew of 333 people reached the shore safely. The Dempo disappeared at 10.55 am. Our final ship will be the SS Hontestrom. This lovely vessel was owned by the NV Hollandse Stoombootmaatschappij. Now the gross tonnage of this vessel would be 1857 gross registered tons with a length of 265.50 feet and she had a beam of 37.20 feet. The vessel could go a speed of 12 knots and she would be launched in 1921 and she would be delivered on April the 21st 1921. Now during World War II on March the 3rd 1943 the Hontestrom departed from Liverpool to Reykjavik. On March the 15th, 1943, she ran aground on Skage Reef and she was completely lost. All crew members were able to save themselves, but one person died. The remaining crew members were rescued by a British warship. The Hontestrom broke into two pieces after her grounding. And that is the end to a video my friends. Thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you guys liked it. Um, it was a slightly larger video than normal. But uh, again, I hope you guys liked it. Um, I certainly had a blast making it. Um, I got to know some ships that I never heard of before. Um, so yeah, again, for the third time now, uh, I hope you guys liked it. Um, I quickly want to take a moment to thank all of you, my subscribers. Um, I wouldn't be here without you. Um, it blows away my mind how 
so many of you guys actually like and enjoy my content so thank you all so very much um, if you have friends who like ocean liners or ships please show them my channel and um, that would help out very much um, if you have any thoughts or comments on this video please leave them in the description down below um, i absolutely love reading your guys's comments so again if you have any comments or thoughts please leave them in the comment section down below uh, i read and reply to each and every one of them and uh, if you have uh, any ideas for a next video you would like me to make please put that in a comment section down below as well uh, and with that out of the way guys i wish you all a good night or day wherever you are and we will see each other on the next video goodbye my friends Follow old shipping lines on social media. Thanks for watching.